when you meditate, you can see the links to these things much more clearly because you're not thinking about just your own survival. You're trying to put down your opinions, your egos, your ego, your desire, and then see what's there when there's nothing else there. And what you find is that all these lines that we draw around ourselves, they're completely made up. Everything is connected. Everything is part of everything. And we're all connected. And so doing things to serve my ego, it really only usually harms myself. And, um, and at that point, it doesn't make sense to do what you had said, like bad things, because it actually makes way more logical and rational sense to be compassionate because you're part of everything. So, so helping someone else will, will ultimately help me. Like if I, if I take all the, the resources and all the food and nobody else can eat, yeah, I can eat forever. I have way more than I need, but now all of a sudden, maybe it's like a doctor that I need to cure my disease or help me with my stroke. They don't have food. They don't have the resources they need to help me out when I need it. You know, the chain of karma can go, I'm just giving like little examples, but like the chain of karma goes way further than you can, can see or rationally or logically deduce it. It, um, it can take a long time to catch up, you know, and, and it, it can take many lifetimes to, to make up for what you've done. And that's like a lot of suffering ultimately. And, uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to help people is to like, yeah, you, you have to survive, you have to live, you have to, to, to participate in our reality but also you have to figure out the right balance and taking, you know, you'll, you'll hear things in like, you know, like Buddhism, but also a lot of religions, they, they teach um, only take what you need. Like that's a rule at the temple. I, I grew up uh, and you know, you're not supposed to serve yourself more food than you even need. You're not supposed to use more water than you need. Um, and I think uh, and every religion I'm familiar with at its core teaches compassion that you're supposed to help other people. And um, I think they're all kind of trying to point you, you know, and, and most of them are literally trying to point you to heaven. So you do these things, you get to heaven. And I, I'm, I'm not telling you, I'm trying to tell you that basically the same things is like, and I think, um, what I'm also trying to say is meditation is a key part of that because it's not in, it's not above the clouds. It's if you're looking out there for it, it's not there. You have to turn your eyes and your mind inward and that's where heaven is. And that's where you will see the path and it affects how you live your life. But if you're looking out there for the signs, you're not going to, it's going to be really hard to see them you know, because you're always going to be tainted by your karma and your need to survive and the things that uh, your impulses that kind of are from your body that override your mind sometimes. And when you meditate, you're making your mind stronger so it can override your body and say, oh, I've had enough. You know, I don't need that. And I should maybe I should not be mean to this person, I should help them because maybe in the future, I'm going to need help. You know, maybe you don't have to think about it in those terms necessarily, like it's serving yourself, but it really is. It's serving yourself. Like every one of us came from a place where we relied on someone else's compassion already. You wouldn't be here if your mom didn't feed you or if someone didn't feed you after you were born, like they were teaching you compassion from the day you were born. You wouldn't have made it this far without that. The only reason you're alive is because somebody else had compassion. And I'll tell you, when you get to the end of your life, you're probably going to need someone else to be compassionate to you too. <laughs>